Hi, I'm Rich from Glasscast. The space I'm standing in today will be the new Glasscast Studio and Training Centre. As you can see, we've installed a pretty impressive high gloss resin floor in here, which of course we did using our very own Glasscast 3 epoxy resin. In this video, I'll be showing you how we calculated the amount of resin and pigment that we'd need, prepared the floor by filling any gaps and sealing the edges, pigmented and mixed the resin in batches, spread the resin evenly, and finally got rid of any air bubbles to leave a near perfect finish. Whilst in most cases, Glasscast is used to create more unique decorative flooring projects, such as penny floors or continuous colour blend floors, it can most definitely be used for high-end, solid colour floors where a really premium appearance like this is required. Because a lot of the guidance is the same, whether you're doing a clear, a solid colour or a colour blend floor, the advice in this video should provide a good introduction to installing any high gloss floor using the Glasscast 3 epoxy resin. So let's see how we did it. As with so many jobs, the key to success is all in the preparation. The perimeter of the floor should be sealed so that the resin is contained from running under walls and skirtings. For this, we are using decorator's caulk, but silicon sealant or acrylic adhesive would also work equally well. In the doorway, a strip made from polypropylene is hot glued into place to form a barrier. As resin does not stick to polypropylene, this can easily be removed once the resin is cured. Any gaps, holes or cracks in the floor will also need to be filled with a filler. Polyester car body filler works well for this, but here we are using the glass cast resin mixed with a fumed silica thickening powder to make our own tough epoxy filler. The resin is mixed as normal and then fumed silica added until the desired thickness is achieved. This filler is then troweled into any holes, cracks or low spots to level and seal them. Although this particular gap between the concrete slabs is already sealed, it is still important to fill it to a level surface, otherwise when the resin cures it will sink ever so slightly where the deeper section is, leaving a very slight ripple in the cured surface, which although almost immeasurable, will be perceivable in the reflection of the finished floor. This may spoil an otherwise flawless finish. After this filler has been left to cure overnight, any high spots or nibs should be removed with a sander to leave a smooth finish. This particular floor is already well sealed and has no porosity, meaning it requires no further preparation. However, if your substrate is wood or unsealed concrete, it may release air into the resin or absorb resin in an uneven way. So you will need to seal the floor with either a thin coat of the Glasscast 3 resin or a compatible epoxy floor primer. Please see our website for more information. Once all of the physical preparation has been done, it's vitally important to thoroughly clean the room of any dirt or dust. Even the smallest fleck of debris can leave an imperfection in the surface. Vacuuming not only the floor but also surrounding surfaces will ensure that the floor remains dust free throughout the process. Epoxy resins are very sensitive to temperature. The Glasscast 3 resin must be used at a stable room temperature of 17 to 25 degrees C. For best results, a temperature of 20 degrees should be targeted. It's important to note that the floor temperature might be colder than the air temperature, and here you can see that we're using an infrared thermometer to easily check the temperature of our slab. With the floor prepped and cleaned, and the temperature of the floor checked, we're now ready for the mix and pour. To calculate the amount of resin required for the job, it's simply a case of working out the square meterage and multiplying this by the thickness required. In our case, the room measures 7 metres by 10 metres, giving us an area of 70 square metres. We'll be doing a relatively thin pour of 1.5 millimetres, as our substrate is very flat and level. 2 millimetres or even 3 millimetres may be preferable on a less than perfect subfloor. So 1.5 times by 70 gives us a resin usage of 105 kilograms. Rounding this up to our nearest trade pack size of 37 and a half kilos means we'll use three kits totaling 112.5 kilograms. The Glasscast 3 is mixed at a ratio of two to one by weight. To make the mixing manageable, we'll divide each kit into three batches, making a total of nine mixes for the entire job. Each batch will consist of 8.33 kilograms of resin and 4.17 kilograms of hardener, which should be carefully weighed out as accurately as you can. The pigment that we are using is added at approximately 2.5%, so 300 grams per batch. 
using smaller, more precise scales to weigh the pigment out will ensure good accuracy. Different pigments and effects will require different ratios, so please take a look at our website for guidance on quantities for your project. For smaller batches of resin, we would recommend mixing thoroughly and carefully by hand, ensuring that the bottom and sides are fully scraped into the mix. However, for larger quantities, a powered paddle mixer may make mixing easier. If you do decide to do this, great care must be taken to ensure that the paddle remains fully submerged and does not cavitate air into the mix, as this can lead to very small air bubbles that may not self-release in the final pour. Whichever method you've used, you should pour the mix from the first bucket into a second and briefly mix again. This double bucket method ensures that there's no unmixed resin left on the sides of the container that you're pouring from. Both buckets can be repeatedly used for the same purpose on each batch. With the resin mixed, it's now time for the pour. For large floors, a notch squeegee on a pole makes spreading the resin evenly a simple task. As a rule of thumb, the notches should be approximately twice the depth of the final coverage thickness. Here, we're using a 4mm notch. For smaller projects, a hand spreader or trowel will still do the job perfectly well. As we have 9 batches of resin, each batch is poured and spread to cover 1 ninth of the room. Masking tape markers placed on the wall help to gauge this. The Glass Cast 3 has very good self-leveling properties, so it only needs to be lightly worked to ensure that it has complete coverage and a fairly consistent thickness. From here, the resin will do the rest of the work. It's then simply a case of repeating the process for each of the batches. It's important to complete the entire floor in one session, and for large floors with multiple batches, it's very useful to have a second person for the mixing. For this 70 square metre floor, the entire process took 45 minutes with two people. Glass gas resin is self-degassing, meaning that the bubbles will burst on their own. However, we noticed a small spot where there were a lot of bubbles, possibly caused by an unsealed area of the floor. So just as a precaution, we quickly flashed over this spot with a propane torch to burst them. If you need to cross an area that already has a resin coating, some spiked overshoes will allow you to do so without excessively disturbing the resin. Once the application is complete, the room should be closed off from drafts and contamination and the temperature maintained. The Glass Cast 3 will then self-level, degas and cure to an incredible final finish. So that's how we did it. The whole process only took less than a day, including all of the prep. And I think it's fair to say that the end result is quite a lot different to most of the resin floors you'll see. With a constant temperature of 20 degrees C in the room, the resin was touch dry and sufficiently cured to walk on around 24 hours after the pour. However, you should leave it as long as possible before bringing in any heavy objects or allowing general traffic into the room, just to avoid marking it. We waited a full four days before bringing in the heavy benches and the equipment for the new studio. Hopefully you've now got a better idea of just what Glass Cast 3 is capable of and how to use it to create high gloss floors like this one. As with any project of this scale, I'd highly recommend starting small or better still, making some test panels in your own environment just to rule out any surprises. And of course, make use of our highly experienced technical team to answer any questions you might have. Reach out to us with your feedback through the comment section below. And don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell to find out first about the next resin tutorial. And then click one of the on-screen links if you'd like to see another Glasscast project right now.